Hello then, welcome to the video. So today we're going to attack all the rust which I've mentioned in previous videos. So basically uh, we're going to be using uh, a few products to try to get the van through the winter until I can paint it properly uh, next spring. As we're in lockdown here in France and will be for the next month, uh, hopefully I'll use that time uh, on the van uh, when I can. So yeah, um, I'll just give you a little rundown of what we're going to do. So the main rust seems to be on the right hand side of the van. Uh, I'm not sure why, I mean, I think that uh, apart from water being thrown up um, by the front wheels, and by the rear wheels as well, because you've got rust at the other end of this protection bar, uh, the fact the van was parked next to a hedge might not have helped. So yeah, this side is worse than the other side. And so in this video I'm going to I'm going to tackle more the rust on these protection bars uh, and it, se it seems to go a little bit underneath as well as you can see. I'll try and stick it under here and we'll see what we've got. I'm just going to treat the outside rust here that I can see. Um, so that's this bar, the back here. The rear bar, which we've seen before, I think, in another video. I'm going to prepare the metal so that I can start to put some some of the products I bought on. So I'll, I'll show you those now. So I bought uh, two products um, from the famous French motoring store called Carter Cash, uh, which I've used before to buy a few little accessories. So here we have uh, some Convertisseur de Rouille, uh, so rust converter in, in English. Um, so Auto K, if you've heard of that, I guess that's going to be out of focus. There we go, Auto K. So that's the Convertisseur de Rouille, um, which is uh, apparently, um, well it's in English, so that's useful. Um, rust converter and epoxy primer in one, so perhaps I shouldn't have bought the the primer. But anyway, um, this is for all vehicles. Uh, so this rust is chemically changed uh, to form a black grey protective coat that can be converted. Converted. My see my eyesight's not very good. Covered with a 1K top coat. Well, perhaps it was good that I bought some primer then. Um, so, clean surface for relief, remove rust, obviously, and any rusty paint coats. Shake can for at least two minutes and test spray. Apply three to four thin and even coats, allowing three to five minutes drying time between each. So that's going to keep me busy. Uh, spray distance approximately 10 to 20 centimetres. Okay. Completely dry after 12 to 24 hours. When dry after 24 hours, can be covered with 1K top coat. In fact, it's not 1K top coat. Um, it is Sparella. Sparella, it's called. There we go. And there you are. I'll show you the can. And I'm in focus again. Brilliant. So, this is Apret Anti Corrosion. Apret well, Primer to you and me. So, in French. Danger contient du propane de deux OL. So uh, I guess I should not have any naked flames near it when I'm using it then. Um, bum 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 bum, garlic contre chaleur, tinsel, destruction, etc. En cas de contact avec les yeux. It's basically keep it away from anything hot. You keep it away from your eyes. But it doesn't actually tell you what you're supposed to do with it apart from spray it on. So I'm assuming that you spray it on. Well, they're both flammable anyway. You can see the. Is that going to focus for me? Thank you. Looks like I need to use something else to focus the camera, so I'm in focus, not my hand, because that doesn't work. So cans of primer and cans of rust converter do. So yeah, basically um, I'll uh, prepare the metal, and I'll put a can next to my head without going to focus. Then. Oh, it's a miracle. There we go. So I've got to carry a can of uh, primer or rust converter around with me to focus my camera. 
So I'm tucking it with a wire brush for now because uh, it's a bit more practical to get around the bottom here and get it onto to this bit here near the bodywork. But then I've got um, I've got my drill out here. I've also found I've forgotten I had one of these to fit on the drill, so I'll give that a try afterwards. So for now, it's just wire brush. We'll see how I get on. Steamy glasses, and uh, I can't find my my masks, um, my DIY mask. So I'm using an improvised COVID mask. So I've been using the wire brush and I've been using my newfound drill bit which is probably a bit slow because I think the battery is probably going a bit flat but uh, you can see it's uh, a little bit better just a bit difficult around the edge of the bodywork there because being, being plastic I need to be careful but I can't get that little bit of rust you can see just underneath yeah the underneath uh, obviously I can't access it very well so down the bottom there so I'm just filming any old how because I can't actually see what I'm doing um, you see all this rust all the way down the edge here um, and obviously I'm a bit blind without jacking the van up I can't get to it and I've got no way of jacking the van up at the minute anyway I've masked off um, the bits where I don't want to get paint is obviously but also to give me a guide as to where I need to put the product so it's basically the ends and underneath and hopefully I'll be able to paint it on and it won't rain overnight so we'll see what happens it's a pity that we've got such low light now that I can't really film this very well but uh, probably film the other end because that'll be easier to there we go that's better so yeah you can see it, it sort of like forms a coating on top but it's clear and I don't want to get on the plastic that's all because it might make a mess because it's sticky on your gloves so so yeah um, that's the first coat I've got another couple of coats to do and according to the instructions or the destructions that means every three to four minutes so in four minutes I'll do the next coat hopefully I won't be as high as a kite when I finish because I can feel the you know it's my cellulose I can feel it in the back of my throat despite wearing a mask. So I think only one side of the van is actually badly rusted and the other three bars are, are not too bad. Meanwhile the back is pretty good actually, I'm quite surprised. Um, yeah, that's okay. There's a little bit of rust there where the, there's the bracket and a little bit obviously here because there's no cover on the end of the bar. Uh, this is where I got my, my uh, wire brush stuck in the hole, so to speak. So I had quite some using time trying to get it back out again. So this side isn't too bad at all. Um, just that end and that end, and that's it. There's no, there's not any rust underneath at all. So that's a bit strange. Anyway, I think it's time for a little bit of tea. Cheers. Of course, I don't do product placement in my channel. So as the light fades, that's the last uh, coat on the side bar. You see here, it's uh, looks like it looks like a clear um, coat of varnish, really. So I've done. That's all done. Now I just started to do the first coat on the back bar. There we go. So I'm just going to do that in there. And the bracket there. A bit of the bracket there. And of course the end here where it's completely destroyed. So that's done. That's the first coat. So there I'm going to have to bring it to an end. Well not the video to an end but my, my work today to an end. I'm going to do the last coats on the back bumper and then that will leave me with the side bumper on this side to do which I want to mask actually but unfortunately uh, as luck would have it um, rain's predicted from around 9 10 o'clock tonight so I'm gonna have to see what happens uh, tomorrow and if it's rainy tomorrow then to leave it to dry and then get on with the last bar on Monday 
and after that uh, well it's a primary coat so that's it for today and have a little rest well we're a couple of days down the line and uh, today uh, we're Tuesday so we're into the fifth day of lockdown here in France um, in the days since the weekend it's been a bit rainy and horrible and this morning it's just very damp um, as you can see it's uh, a bit damp on top of the uh, egg bread van today so the idea today was to or is probably is to um, do the um, rust treatment on this side down here and do the primer coats on the back and this side so I'll, I'll tackle that this afternoon uh, my daughter's coming home for lunch so I'm going to go and get some food prepared and I'll see you later on in fact uh, it's not a time for the primer coat it's time to give this uh, stuff a try on this side because I haven't done it yet so I need to treat the rust on this side I scraped it a bit but like I said there's not a lot to do um, the idea is not to get any spray on my camera because this stuff it's very fine it's clear it comes out like a varnish but it's, uh, it's very strong when it comes to fumes and things so I tend to spray it a little bit and then step away so I've just got the just round here to do really. Especially if it's for about 10 centimetres away. And it stinks. So the idea is is that I try not to spray myself in the face with it, so that wouldn't be ideal, despite having a mask on. So basically that, and I'm gonna step away because I'm getting a bit gassed now. Not ideal. Get a bit of fresh air. And I'll just do around the <coughs> the bracket here. So that needs to be done. Just around around the top here. And along the bottom. So I've got a bit of cardboard somewhere. I'll try to find that. I've got a bit of cardboard to stop cardboard even. If I have to spray it in this direction towards me, I don't want to get a face full of it. So I'll try to put the cardboard underneath there like that. So I can't see what I'm doing underneath. So let's get a few sprays underneath like that. <coughs> oh. Oh. I think some people pay a lot of money to sniff on that. I'm not one of them. This side of the van I've been a bit haphazard with the masking but then again there's not that much being treated on the metal so you know I've just basically uh, just put the minimum on there. So now it's going to be the primer coat. Um, I've suddenly realised actually that um, I've treated one side of the van and I've treated the back then realised I had to treat the, some of the back again because there were some bits I'd missed you know with the rust treatment and I hadn't done the what would be the French uh, offside so that means that uh, I can do one side of the van with this but I can't do the rest because I've got to wait for it all to dry so that's a bit silly because it means that I'm going to have to do that tomorrow so at least with this I think you only need one coat. That's what I've understood in the French instructions anyway. I, I managed to find them by the way. But um, yeah, I'll just give it one coat and it also means that for the back and the uh, offside I will have to mask things properly because at the moment, sorry about the camera being a bit too eager to go down, um, so I've only masked a little bit and I've realised that there's a pigment in the primer, it's uh, sort of rust brown as usual, it can be grey as well but 
the one I bought is that colour, it's like a ready colour and uh, I can do the near side because I've masked it quite well First time I sprayed something really, apart from the treatment. Well, that's not too bad. There's a few drips in there, look, you can see. One there. But I guess I'll just have to flat it down a little bit before I paint the, the bars black. My first attempt at spraying, because I've never sprayed things before. It's not too bad. So, to save you the, the pain of seeing me do the rest, um, I'll, I'll crack on with that tomorrow. And at the same time, I'll probably just check the, the bar I've just sprayed and see if there's any bits I've missed. So, today's Wednesday and it's the sixth day of lockdown. So, yesterday I spray painted the side bar with primer. Fortunately, I discovered this morning that underneath, can't really film it, it's right underneath, but some of the paint's flaked off at the bottom here, so... I'll give that a run over with some paper at some point. So today we're going to fix the end of the rear bar because normally I'll go around the other side so you can see it's supposed to look like that with a sort of plastic uh, cap on the end. Um, unfortunately the plastic cap on mine went missing before I bought it. Before, before I bought the valve that is not the bar. So I rust treated it and as you can see there's a nice big dink in it. So the idea is, is to use this cap from I think it was from the Nutella jar or something like that to stick on the end here. And it's slightly it's not actually too big for the, the size. So what I was thinking is I'm gonna stick that on there and then this bit here I'll make up with some epoxy putty. So epoxy putty is in here. I've been using this quite a lot actually. I've even used it on our patio because the some of the paving stones came away and it actually sticks them down onto the ground. So it's concrete uh, onto slate. So they're quite works quite well with those. Um, here we're doing plastic onto metal, so hopefully it should be okay. So I bought this from Amazon, MBHK, epoxy putty. And uh, so I'm going to use that to both stick this onto the bar and also make up the little gap made by the dink uh, on the bar itself. So I had fun getting it out because it was stuck inside the tube, but uh, I stuck my knife in the top and it looks like that, so it's sort of a tube. Um, you can see the the centre is a different colour, and you basically need the two parts together once you've taken the plastic coating off there, and just put it where you need to. 
Simple as that. I've forgotten how sticky and messy this stuff is. I've got it on my fingers. So let's put three blobs there and see if that will do. There we go. Oh. And hopefully that will stay put. So I've got um, a little bit left. So I need two hands to do the rest. So, job done. Um, I think I'll try to see if I can find something to put up against it, like a brick or something like that. Up. I'll just lean it against the, the plastic. It doesn't, oh, that's not going to be high enough, is it? Get the stick up on the ground. And that one. Get it in the middle. There we are. Hopefully that will. It's not going to move like that, is it? Unless some magic takes takes place. So we'll leave that to dry. You got like a, a, a thin plastic coating. There's some blowing down my drive there. So I'll get it and throw it in the bin. So a thin plastic. Um, just filming the drive, sorry. A thin plastic coating inside on or around the the um, putty and it's a pain to take off because it's so thin uh, and it's so stuck to the putty that you need to have a knife to take it off little by little so it's quite a messy business really but what it is it's not it's not cheap I think it's about 20 something euros but for what it is it's useful I've been sitting on here and that's probably moved things, hang on a sec, shouldn't sit on the van. So we'll leave that like that for now, and then tomorrow, because today's Wednesday and the kids are at home, so I like to just get on with it on my own really, without the bother of the kids, uh, in fact they're asleep at the moment, but um, taking their siest, but I'd rather be around just in case I'm needed. So I think I'll get on with a bit of work. Um, we'll come back to it tomorrow. So we're already at the weekend and uh, well it's a little bit damp and unfortunately the, um, the primer coat I put on yesterday uh, will need another one, another coat. So we've got a sort of nice mottled effect which means the coat isn't uniform so it's just the near side bar and the rear bar don't need to be particularly bad there. Need to be redone. The one I did the other day, when it wasn't so damp, uh, it's fine apart from it's cracked a little bit. There, but you know that will do. That's fine. So this is nearly empty now. So I'm hoping I'm going to have enough. And hopefully it'll be all right.
We're about finished. That's about empty. Oh. So I think that's uh, a tiny bit better. There's a bit crack there, but we'll have to live with it. But uh, I'm going to put hammer right over the top, so it should be all right. I, mean, I just wanted to overprotect the the bars. So when I said to my brother-in-law that uh, I've painted the bars and he came round and he said to me well, what you put primer on for? There you go, got a bit there missing oh well, just have to live with that so I said to him, I thought it would be better to uh, double protect things, you know um, I've put the the treatment on, the primer and now I'm going to put some hammerite on and I don't think these bars have actually been changed on the van since it was new in 2011 so for my mind these bars should last another eight years probably I hope probably last longer than me we'll have to see anyway um, the next stage will be to do the black um, which I'll do tomorrow so this is dragging on a little bit it's lasting almost a week between rain and uh, having other things to do and hopefully we'll get things finished uh, either tomorrow or on Monday. So today we're going to do the hammer white coat um, after having to, to give the primer another coat. Um, we haven't had any rain but it was a bit damp and it caused the, the paint to run so I thought I'll give it another coat and uh, that was uh, on Saturday and today's Monday so this job's been dragging on now for over a week. Uh, I'm basically doing it as and when I've got time or the opportunity to to work on the on the van so uh, yeah today I'm going to make a start on doing the black hammer white coat and uh, I think I've got about probably two three hours to, to work on it probably a bit less because this afternoon I've got uh, an English lesson uh, to give so even though we're in lockdown here in France I'm still continuing with lessons via webcam so if you need an English lesson and you understand this because obviously you're French then I'm always open for lessons uh, but via webcam it seems that people don't like webcams anyway let's get on so before we get on there's a slight small problem um, for some reason I bought a nice big tin of Hammerite Black or Francais Forger which means the hammer finish and I bought a tiny tin of just plain black so I think that the the protection bars are going to have to be in this nice fetching hammer finish paint so I guess that's going to be a bit weird but anyway it's expensive stuff and I don't really want to buy another pot of black paint and I'll probably use the black one strangely for the subframe um, which is really not what I intended Oh well.
So that's the first coat done. Uh, you can see it's gone on quite well actually. There's a little drop there on the back. There's a few of them actually. Um, I think I'll just use some of this, this fine sandpaper to flat it off a little bit before I do a second coat. So yeah, generally pleased with that. Looks right new. And this side is especially because it was really rusty. It's very rusty this side. So that's not bad. That's freshly painted so that's sort of shiny. It seems to dry a little bit. Not matte but it's probably because it's just the first coat. But uh, generally not bad. I did something silly here. I moved my dust sheet and got bits of tree all over the, the bumper so I'm going to have to sand that a little bit to get rid of the bits uh, and then paint over the top thing. That should be okay. And the other good thing is that uh, because I spent so long on the floor I was able to get a good look at the chassis underneath and it's very sound. I hadn't quite realised, I never really bothered to look to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's okay. This has been raining since the early hours after the lovely day yesterday but the paint has held oops so you can see it's, it's repelling the water so I'm quite pleased at least it's dried I had enough time to dry and it's it looks okay so that's the first coat so the next coat will be done tomorrow which is Wednesday um, apparently it's not going to be raining tomorrow obviously it's going to be dumped from today so we'll just have to see um, what happens there we go so it's been a bit rainy and damp again and now it's going to be time to do the last coat um, it's predicted to rain tomorrow as well so hopefully um, it will be fully dry by the time it does so you've got a little areas where the paint has sort of got damp I think it's mainly around here you've got uh, little, little sort of marks here um, but there's nothing much I can do about it now and you can see the where the rust was on here um, we'll see how it goes yeah, there as well so I'll just give uh, a few bits, a little bit of a sand, and then I'll do the next coat. So, job to Gooden. It's the following day. Today is, I think, Thursday. And, yeah, I think that uh, we could say that is not bad. Even if you did buy the wrong hammerite paint. So I thought it was going to be the shiny one, but it's not. But anyway. Everything's well protected, and this was the rustiest side, so not bad, not bad at all. Worth lying on the ground for. So I guess the next job to be the wheels. I bought some more primer because I need to do around the outside here because it's a bit rusty. Some rust treatment on there first, and then some primer. And after that I need to go inside here to fix the bar that runs between the two suspension legs, well the two mountings of the suspension legs. It's basically the bar that holds the, uh, the front panel, the front dash panel on, wire two screws here. And also holds, excuse my sitting it's a bit cold this morning, um, and also holds the, the lock for the bonnet. So yeah, things are looking good. So on this cold and uh, chilly morning, uh, things are finally finished regarding the protection bars. So I'd like to thank you very much for bearing with this rather long and drawn out video. And uh, I'd like to say take care of yourselves and see you again in another video. Bye.